Hello and welcome. I'm Maria Ressa. This is Rappler Talk. On June 30th, President-elect Rudy Duterte becomes the President of the Philippines. Heading the, the apparatus of his communications team is a 41-year-old television journalist who is going to take over and tell us how this is going to move forward. Please join me in welcoming Martin Andanar. He will become the Secretary, Secretary Martin Andanar. Come June 30th, he is will be heading the Presidential Communications Operations Office. Welcome to Rappler, Martin. Thank you so much, Maria. And let me tell you that this is such an inspiring studio that you have here. You're so kind. Uh, no, no, this is great. I've never seen something like this. This is the newsroom of the future. We hope, well, Tana, now, no, no. <laughs> but no now, we, now in the future. Now in the, <laughs> we're actually, already in the future. Yeah. You know, this is actually the way I feel sometimes. Yeah. Right now, we're living in the future, and it's scary yeah. as heck. Yeah. So, so you are moving into a, it's going to be a challenging time. What do you see? What do you want to do in this new post? It's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a, so much challenge, Maria, considering that I'm wearing two hats here, not, not only as the spokesperson of the government or speaking on behalf of the different cabinet members, but also... Uh, I also wear the hat of managing the bureaucracy, right. and these are the agencies under the Presidential Communications Office, uh, PTV4, you've got Radio Nabaya. Television, got, radio. Yeah, you've got Philippine Information Agency. That's the, the print wire service, or the, no longer print, but it's Philippine. Uh, yeah, th th there's another print wire, which is the Philippine News DNA. Agency. You've got the... Uh, National Printing Office, the Apple Production, another printing house. There's IBC 13, which is supposed to be up for sale. Right. And uh, there's also the Bureau of uh, Communication Services, and three more. Okay. Yeah. And then total this this nine. How many um, how many people are you going to be managing? About uh, inside the office about 200. Okay. And outside that would be about 3,000. Okay. Employees. And yeah. what do you want to do? Well. Uh, as a spokesperson who would speak on behalf of the government, I, I, I plan to streamline the communications process of the different departments by using also uh, assets, um, when I say assets, manpower coming from the Philippine Information Agency and assigning them to different uh, departments so that the flow of information becomes seamless uh, from department to department all the way to the president's office to the public and uh, of course to the media and as a so I, I have to craft a national communications policy mm -hmm. for the government for the executive to be to be guided on what to do for the next six years and that's part of it another is to fix our government uh, state media which is channel 4 there's also a uh, P uh, Radio Nambaya. There, there, there's about 37 radio stations all over. The Did you know that we have five radio stations in Metro Manila owned by the government? Yes. Four, four AM and one FM radio. So we want to fix that. We want it to be you know, state of the art and to be able to give out quality uh, programming just like the BBC. So that's what I've been uh, pronouncing for the past two weeks that we want to br bring it up to par or quite Right, sobran lapit lang ng BBC or ABC. Um, we also want to innovate in, in a way that um, it's not really innovation, but we want uh, the PCO mm -hmm. to be inclusive. Uh, we have two more channels remaining, or two more channels available in our franchise, and we we would like to give uh, a channel for our Muslim brothers and sisters. And we also want to give a channel for our Lumad brothers and sisters. So uh, therefore, yeah, we, we have so many regions in the country, and we want to serve as many cultures and regions as possible. Fantastic. Yeah. And you know, something like the BBC takes uh, a, a dollar or a pound from every mm -hmm. from every citizen. I mean, are you looking at how mm -hmm. the funding, or this is too further down the road? Yeah. The <clears throat> the, the the charter of PTV is like the charter of any GOCC, so it has to be self-sustaining. So the, 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 there's, a, there's a problem when you, when you try to rationalize the Rajan Umbayan, which yes. lives on government uh, funds, and, and you have PTV that's supposed to make money. So there, there's got to be a rationalization, a streaming uh, of some sorts, um, once we start this uh, upgrade and um, development of, of the entire station. Now, if, if you look at the charter of BTV, it's supposed to be independent. It's yes. supposed to be editorially independent. It's supposed to be uh, 
economically independent. Mm -hmm. it, it, it should be already uh, surviving on its own. But uh, I think uh, the past administration, the, the presidential uh, office has been uh, allocating funds for this to survive. So we, we have to find a way on how to turn this around. So uh, you have, um, aside from the, the logistics of how you're going to do this, right, and this is going to be a challenge for you, you also have a maverick president mm -hmm. who speaks his mind on yes. every mm -hmm. issue. I mean, how are you going to, to bridge uh, his intent mm -hmm. from, from policy, for mm -hmm. example? Mm -hmm. Well, anything that the president says starting June 30th is, is already public policy, right? Correct. And, uh, he understands that. He right? understands that. Okay. And, and since he became and since he became mayor back in, 19, in, in the 1980s, he, he, he's, been, he's been managing that Davao the way he is managing it right now. And he's yes. been very successful because what lacks uh, this country is really the lack of the discipline and, and the rule of law. We, we have the rule of law, but we don't follow it. That's right. why he, the, the president, the Duterte, was elected uh, precisely because of the reason why uh, there, there's so much uh, discipline, disciplining to be done in this, in this country. Now, what he says, he's, he's just a uh, straightforward guy. Mm -hmm. he's, not, he's not like the other politicians who, yes. who beats around the bush and says all of these things and um, so much lip service. But President Duterte is a guy, when he says something, he means it. And his marching orders was, the first one was no corruption. Second is you work hard so that you bring out the best of the departments that uh, you are managing. How, what about the, the relationship mm -hmm. between, so he's, media. sorry, you, mm -hmm. you've taken this, right? Let's talk about yeah. the relationship between the president and media. Mm -hmm. How do you envision this? And mm -hmm. we, it seems like we, he kind of, or we collectively have gotten off not to a very good start, right? Yeah. Is, that, is that correct? And I'd love to hear your thoughts. I look at this Maria from a cultural point of view. Okay. I'm, I'm a Mindanaoan. I grew up in Cagayan de Oro in Surigao City. I understand mm -hmm. completely what the, the culture in Mindanao and Davao is. If you go to Davao, and I have, we have been there already, yes. uh, and, and you look at the local media, they have a very uh, healthy relationship with the mayor. Yes. And uh, on the other hand, if, if once you look at the national media, which means media in Manila, it's, it's totally the, the opposite. Now, if you go to Surigao, if you go to Hagen de Oro, if you go to Cebu, mm -hmm. it's the same uh, healthy relationship that he has in Davao media. So I look at it from a cultural uh, perspective. Explain meaning, that, yeah. meaning, meaning, uh, in Manila, iba dito, uh -huh. iba, iba yung pananaw, iba yung pananaw ng tao. I guess the, the political correctness is, is um, I, I don't know if, I, if we should call it advanced here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's Imperial Manila, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and we see things differently from from our brothers and sisters who are in the media in the provinces. Mm -hmm. In the provinces, mas mahaba ang pasensya ng tao dun, mm -hmm. compared to here, na we're more Westernized in in, yes, uh, in, yes. in Metro. So I, I I think it it will only it, as I've been saying. Uh, once the national media, meaning media in Metro Manila, uh, gets to know the president well, President Duterte will be the darling of the press, and that's how it started. Yes, of the first course. few days, the, the yeah, first yeah, few yeah. days he won, he would he would yeah. give. Uh, well, certainly press during calls the wherever. campaign, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, he was the yeah. one who actually complained the least mm -hmm. in terms of yes. media treatment during the campaign. Yes, right? yes. yes. Um, so what, I, I guess my a worry here, though, would be this: if 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 you see it as a geographical mm -hmm. divide, mm -hmm. a geographical divide may be habit, right? Mm -hmm. But is it also a, a a control issue? Is it is the media not supposed to ask t tough questions? Not really. I don't think I don't believe in that, Maria. Since he has given the cabinet, his uh, presumptive cabinet, uh, the all the authority and the leeway to speak with the media freely. <clears throat> And if, if you go by the the meaning of a of a cabinet member as an alter ego of the president, yes. So when yes. I'm here, I, I speak on behalf of the president. Yes. So the, the yes. fact that I'm here and I'm speaking with you, yes. That means uh, the president has given me the authority to, to speak to you freely, to speak to anyone here freely with with no with no filters. So <clears throat> I believe that 
it's not gonna take long before everything normalizes. Yeah. Great. Mm, I believe. I believe in that. And what can make that? Uh, what can make that uh, proceed faster? I guess. It's like a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting like, to know each other is that part of it? Is, is there since maybe. you're since you're a journalist and you are from Manila, right? I mean, do you see? Uh, I guess in terms of expectations, yeah. I mean, do you see some of the president, the incoming president's expectations to be different from the way the way journalism has been practiced? I guess is it clear what role journalists are supposed to play it, in the new administration? It it it, it all started with with uh, the, uh, having a demarcation line between the crusaders the president calls the serious journalists like you, the crusaders who are after the truth and who are after um, the real stories that, um, that move the nation. And you also have those who are the extortionists. You know? So I think, I, 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 think um, I, I am recommending to the president and I have already told the executive secretary that we shall be that we should have an executive order on creating the presidential task force on media killings. We have a presidential task force now on judicial killings, but yes, not the yes, media yes. killings. So this judicial killings, as uh, so far, has not been so successful. I guess because it's too broad. Now, with the media killings as a, as, as a presidential task force, then uh, you have me mm -hmm. and, and you have uh, the, the other journalists that I'll be inviting mm -hmm. to, to join me, to investigate and to get down to the bottom of the problem. Yes. Uh, if we have this, then we can really get to the bottom of the problem because we have the Philippine National Police, we have the NBI, we have the DOJ to find out what really happened to this journalist who died. Great. So if there's a proper investigation that will know if was he killed because he was really a crusader? Yes, yes. Or was he killed be because he was an extortionist? You know, mind you, his statements about it at that press conference that night. Mm -hmm. were, were, June were, 2. It was there June 2, yeah. Yes. Um, was actually not hypocritical. I mean, everyone recognizes the yes. corruption in mm -hmm. the ranks of journalism mm -hmm. in every part mm -hmm. of society. I think it was more what happened afterwards that it became so contentious. So mm -hmm. in your mind, how were you... How do you see it moving forward? You said you think it will normalize. How, we'll normalize. how do we get there? We start with the institutional changes. We, we, we start with uh, fixing the different communications um, uh, standard operating procedure of, of every department. Uh, in, in other words, we light uh, every dark corner of the government. Great. So when we light every dark corner of the government, then the public may see, the media may see, the, effect, the inefficiencies and the ineffective ways that have cost our, our country the term greatness. And once we have a, a good system that would show how transparent the government is in information, then you, you would see an, an administration with, that's, that's very, very transparent and maybe the most transparent compared to the previous administrations. The president already mentioned in one of his pronouncements, in one of his interviews, that he will e execute a, an executive order uh, on freedom of information. Yeah, yeah. Of course, if Congress won't do it, I'll, yeah. I'll sign it. And I will pass it on to the different departments, and that includes my department. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to this. What about social media? This is the, in his campaign. He yeah. he, he used social media. Mm -hmm. He was the best at using it, right? Yeah. So, uh, how what role will social media play in in what you do? Well, Buzz Rappler was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Martin. And uh, as um, I mean, uh, we really couldn't have grown without social media, right? But well, yes, when the president announced my appointment. That was the first thing in mind I had, that if we wanted to show people change, then the first change from the department would be to be transparent and to be present in the social media during the inauguration. So I, when I pronounced, uh, when I, in one of the interviews, I said that we would stream it yeah. on, on Facebook, like, like stream, the professional streaming like this, not just the phone that you sort of right. angle like that. No. If, if we stream stream it on Facebook, then that would be great for the 51 million Filipinos on Facebook. And then Facebook 
uh, messaged me. Mm -hmm. They wanted to to work with us for the inauguration, and they mentioned that uh, it, if it's not the first in the world, it would be the first in Asia to have official partnership with Facebook for an inauguration. Correct. It's like wow! I go okay, let's do this. So we got excited. Yeah. They flew to Davao, yeah, and and then they told us that they would help us all the way. So I said, so I I, I messaged uh, Under Secretary Kat De Castro, uh, <laughs> incoming for the for the Department of Tourism. To give us some materials, yung mga magagandang <laughs> shots ng Pilipinas. Like, oh, I mean, what are we gonna do? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three. Eight hours of streaming worldwide, and you got Facebook pushing it. My right. God, we, we don't have to spend a single centavo to push that. Uh, so sabi ko, yeah. And then uh, I, I guess uh, everybody's happy on social media that we're streaming it, and uh, I, I, you're also streaming it. Yes. A lot of companies are streaming it. So, and that's a sign already that. Uh, this uh, presidential communications office will be one office that will push for innovation when it comes to information dissemination. Fantastic. Yeah. Let me ask you to put on your hat as the presidential spokesman. I mean, in, yeah. in this one, in terms of the cabinet appointments and what President <coughs> Duterte is, uh, the, men, the men and the women around him yeah. walking in, right? What we've seen. And again, we expected him to be a maverick, but we've yeah. seen a relatively old, the median age of the cabinet is 66 mm -hmm. years old, mm -hmm. and technology is the game changer. You yes. said this, right? I, I, do we have the capacity with the people you have there? I mean, yeah. is, is there, there could be experience for sure, but is there an appreciation of what technology, <laughs> technology can do? Yeah. <laughs> As we speak now, I'm, I'm receiving all of these messages from the presumptive cabinet members through Viber. Great. <laughs> so we're all in Viber. We have right, a Viber right. group, and and you know it, it's going to be uh, m most of them are in social media, and um, with with age, I don't I, I don't believe that it's going to be um, uh, th th that it's going to be a negative or it's 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 going to be a case of uh, of, of a government that that's not uh, receptive to, to new technology. Um, as a matter of fact, we have a um, department of uh, uh, Energy Secretary Kusi, who's, yes. who's who, who wants to to, f to fight for you know, to fight for renewable energy and, and yes. all of this stuff. They have DOST. I don't think we're going to have a problem. And plus, um, we are surrounded by by uh, members or by um, people in uh, in the cabinet below below the people in the cabinet are young and very dedicated and inspired uh, people who'd want to bring this country forward. And uh, whoever you, because uh, President Duterte is surrounded by people his age, yes. right? Yes. But the, the outer layer, no, that's the most important. Yes. The, the support group are young people. Yes. Yeah, so it, 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 it should strike a balance. Plus we need the wisdom of, of all of the gentlemen and ladies uh, that are present in the cabinet. Have you yeah. chosen someone for DICT yet? Has the president chosen? Not I, yet. I am not certain if, if we have. I think there was a, a, a press con. Uh, th there was a press release that came out, but uh, it, it wasn't confirmed. Yeah. And then the other part that struck me also is there were some mm -hmm. appointments that had very blatant conflicts of interest. I mm -hmm. mean, mm -hmm. I, what's the what's been the discussion internally well, about that? Well, I think the conflict of interest was uh, Mark Villiers' uh, Mark Villiar. appointment. Yes, yes. Um, he, he already said that, um, well, the president uh, in his statement said that Mark Villiers should draw a map and place all of the subdivisions that they have and make sure that the roads that he builds does not go through that subdivision. I think that's clear. Okay. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> I'm going to take some of the questions that are coming yes, in from Twitter. Yes, please. Yeah. This is uh, from at GF on Tego. Sir Martin, sino po pala yung pinili mong chief ng PTV4 or any updates po dun sa privatization ng IBC-13? Yeah. Yung, yung sa PTV4 po, ay meron po kaming pinagpipilian na iba't ibang news executives mula sa iba't ibang network. No? At uh, sa punot, ang punot dulo po nito ay uh, ang selection committee po ang mag approve I can only forward the names. I entertain all of all of the people who are interested. I also talk to the people I think would be a good fit. But at the end of the day, it's really the appointment 
papers of the president and his, and his signature that's that's in a, that's needed here. So you know, let's just wait for that announcement. And what are you looking for in the recommendations you're you're putting forward? I'm, I'm looking for somebody who can who who has a who has a track who has a good track record of running a network, and who has a good sense of. Uh, of course, I mean you, you, you won't have a good track record if you don't have if you're not a news person, right? And uh, somebody who's who's here because he wants to, or he or she wants to pay it forward, and and uh, turn PTV4 news around, because our objective now is to make PTV4 the BBC of the country, or the ABC, or the CBC, or um, PBS. Now we can't do that if we don't put uh, people who have the track record. And I believe that we have a wealth of talents in the Philippines. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, an, it's a very, very interesting time. Very I interesting. I've, globally, I've yeah. talked to the Australian Embassy already and I've, uh, I've, I've, uh, I've told them that if, if, they can, if they can connect us with ABC Australia, and, and, and they're doing exactly, my my recommend my, my request to connect us to uh, ABC Australia uh, would be sending uh, a team of uh, trainers to retrain to retool our our uh, journalists at PTV and I'd do the same I'd talk to I'd reach out to the UK embassy and, and ask for help from BBC and okay. I'd reach out to Maria Ressa also help we're us here. out we're definitely here um, yeah. what do you see are the biggest challenges ahead for you. Oh, there's really a lot, Marie. I mean, this. Uh, <laughs> uh, in I've I've uh, made uh, ambitious pronouncements, you know, but I believe we can do this with the president that we have, because the president has maybe more than 100 percent political will, and and he told me that uh, he's not a micromanager, and he would allow me to prove myself, okay. and. The, the biggest challenge is to to professionalize, to streamline, uh, to, to give the proper direction uh, to the agencies uh, under the PCO. I believe we have enough bright people in PCO, hard work and diligent, but they just need guidance. Um, the other challenge would be um, how to streamline the information flow yes. within the government um, towards the people, towards the public, uh, towards the, the media. So that, like for example, I, I would encourage all the departments to, I mean, just up, update your website for Christ's sake, you know? I mean, <laughs> up, update your website, update your, your social media accounts, put your reports there, financial report. You know, I, I, would, yes. I would encourage them to do that. And you need a, a Okay, the biggest challenge is the cultural change yes. that we have to do. Fantastic. That's, that's yeah. great. Yeah. A challenge for social media. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened during the, the elections yeah. was, you know, the level of engagement increased tremendously, but the level of anger, and that's part of also what elected mm -hmm. uh, President Duterte, right, yeah. was the, the anger that's there. I mean, how are you going to handle this anger and turn it can we turn it in a more constructive manner? I mean, what do you plan to do? Now? Turn it around. Yeah, well, the, the anger turned into votes for President Elect Duterte. It did. And because President Elect Duterte is a no nonsense guy, he's an action person, he's very pragmatic. And what we need now, uh, first and foremost, is security in, in our country. Uh, if we look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I suppose because of the PPP of uh, President uh, Aquino and and the, the economic numbers that have gone up, uh, people can loan and buy houses or can have shelter, they can eat already, so the next is security. And that's what the president, I think that's the number one, um, the number one uh, marching orders for, for General De La Rosa, yes. to, to clean up the streets and give the streets back to the children. I'm, you know, I, I actually, mm -hmm. I always felt he was very on point in terms of his strategic direction. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge will be how he's going to mm -hmm. carry it through the mm -hmm. bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that are worrisome has been that, mm -hmm. I, and again, I'm not certain you yeah. will be the man who has to, to speak for the president, yeah. right? Um, sometimes his words, when he is so straightforward, also 
splinters the mm -hmm. our society, the a geographic divide, mm -hmm. kind of the way you pointed it yeah. out, yeah. and then also a, a gap, an economic divide between the rich and the poor, the mm -hmm. educated, the mm -hmm. non-educated. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to to unite mm -hmm. these these forces now well, once he becomes president? Yeah. The, well, the, the the best person to talk about this is Secretary Sani Dominguez, who did an excellent job in Davao with the first two days of the, the business forum that he organized and you know I we saw the the big shots in business there the big wigs there and, and they were so happy with what happened and uh, uh, Secretary Sani Dominguez uh, is doing his part in, in um, addressing the concerns that you were mentioning earlier. Do you think you can harness this and oh, turn yeah. the anger into in, into uniting. Oh yeah, yes. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. We, I've, I've, I have uh, anecdote stories of, of people uh, volunteering to quit their jobs in the private sector to help the government because they see that this is the only time that we can change the country. You know, Maria, I believe that we have, we have, we have the, we have the laws, the right laws. We have the objectives. We have. The direction we we know the direction, but but we just lack the political will, and this is what incoming president Duterte is bringing to the table. That's why I said he always says he's the last card because he has the most. Uh, I suppose he could full tank if it's a card, then he has a full tank of political will. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. How do you plan to harness the online power of the Duterte supporters that elected him? Mm -hmm. The more that we engage with, you know, at, at the end of the day, Maria, uh, it's the performance that matters. Yes. No matter, no matter how much we uh, we we put money, for example, and, and pushing our news or pushing our content at the onset, uh, but if we cannot deliver. The promise, if if the product does c cannot speak for itself, yes. then even those millions of supporters online will just switch channels. So, we we in the cabinet, we have to deliver the change that President Duterte campaigned for. If we cannot do that, then we will lose the supporters. How much time do you think you have? Uh, well. Hundred days. We're, we're we, we have a hundred days to to work, 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 <laughs> and then and then we have the next six years to make this country great. Fantastic. Um, a, a question from social media from yeah. Twitter at Chichaichi. Yeah. Is there a possibility your partner Irwin will join you in the Duterte cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> I think Irwin. I think Irwin is. Uh, uh, well, he's enjoying his job, and he tells me that. He doesn't want to get into government, and he he finds himself more effective doing his uh, doing his job, um, watching over what government uh, people are doing. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, yeah. I, any last thoughts? I mean, this is the first of, of many. I hope we we get to hear from you about where it's headed. It's it's a it's exciting at the same time. It's. Mm -hmm. It's going to be. A, there's tough challenges ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we need the support of the of the entire Philippines. Uh, the president of Duterte is not a president of 16 million, but the president of 100 right. million Filipinos. When he announced my name as the chief of the communications office, we hit the ground running and we did our our. Uh, vision and mission, everything that uh, we usually do in the corporate world. Yeah. And, and we decided that our vision for PCO would be partner for change. Now, uh, to paraphrase what Abe Lincoln said, a, a divided house cannot stand. Now, uh, a group of uh, a bunch of cabinet members alone cannot change this nation. We need the cooperation of 100 million Filipinos. And just uh, please support us. At the same time, uh, my message would be please um, 
uh, be on guard and uh, uh, be uh, participative yes. in, in in government by, by by reading, watching Rappler and the other different news agencies, and tell us what you think, because that's the only way that we'll we'll know, we'll find out what is happening on the ground. And I can promise you that as a secretary of the Presidential Communications Office, I will keep my feet on the ground uh, and also uh, my ears. Fantastic, fantastic. I can't let you go until, you know, you talked about the inauguration and yeah. the philosophy. I guess you, you said you're going to, it'll be the first time it will be streamed, uh, mm -hmm. an yeah. inauguration of a head of state. Yes, yeah. But What's your, is there a philosophy in the thinking behind this that, you, that is different from the past? Aside from the Facebook live stream, aside from using social media, is there any way that you want us to think about it differently? We want the Filipinos to think that we are as transparent as we can be and we will, we will harness the power of technology just to get to where you are, your living room, your bedroom, your bathroom, no? or wherever you watch or you listen to information and also to give our OFWs the chance to, to watch the inauguration of the president that they voted for. Now we, we have what, eight million OFWs and we have uh, two or three more million migrants. Uh, mm. We are a global citizen, the rest of the Filipinos. So, yes. so we, we want them to watch it for free. Mm. Okay. That, that's, that's basically the, the perspective where I'm coming from. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Guys, any questions you have, yeah. use hashtag Rappler Talk. Martin is on Twitter. Um, yes. your, your handle is at Martin, Martin and Andanar. 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 Um, send your questions. He's on social. Um, <laughs> two days time, we have a new president. I'm Maria Ressa. This is Rappler Talk. See you soon.